invito eh, sul palco Isabelle Saint Germain. Isabelle Saint Germain. Bienvenue. Merci. Isabelle Saint Germain eh, viene dal Québec, eh, coordina lo sviluppo e l'attuazione dei progetti educativi di Equitea che è un'organizzazione eh, che eh, promuove stili di vita solidali, etici ed ecologici. E a Isabel abbiamo chiesto di eh, affrontare il tema eh, la, del, degli alternative food network, dei sistemi alternativi del cibo e anche eh, dirci qualcosa sui food council, sui consigli del cibo che possono essere un elemento centrale nella governance eh, del cibo e delle risorse naturali a tutti i livelli, dal locale al nazionale all'internazionale. Quindi ascoltiamo Isabel. Hi, do you hear me well? Yes. I'm going to make the presentation in English, so be indulgent. Um, I think it was uh, the subject I was, I was uh, asking to, uh, to talk, I think it was, it was pretty broad for half an hour, so I'll do my best to present you. Uh, what we're doing at ICITER. Uh, ICITER is a non-for-profit organization, independent. Uh, it's based in Montreal, Quebec, uh, in Canada. And we are, actually, our mission is to build social movement, encouraging, we're working with citizen, enterprise, organization, government, so they can make ecological and equitable choice in a solidarity. We've been, um, we've been uh, involved in many campaigns for the last 20 years. And I want to mention that uh, actually we're a very independent organization. We only have 5% of our funding from government for special projects. So most of the funding comes from, uh, from members. Our main goal for 2016 uh, is to uh, work, we're working a lot on reducing greenhouse gas uh, emission, uh, reducing the use of synthetic pesticides. Uh, we've been promoting fair trade for the last 20 years, so hi to uh, my fair trade fans here. And um, promote sustainable development effort. And of course, for the since the beginning of ICTAR, uh, we have been aiming to reduce environmental impact in agriculture and the food industry. And how we're doing it, it's promoting organic agriculture and promoting local agriculture as well uh, within institution, which I'm going to focus more. And you have to notice that I come from Canada, which is a big country, small population. We love our cars, we love our big monster house, we love our low budget uh, cheap food. So this is, this is the context where we're working on. And we've been actually working on and decrease the use of pesticides for a couple of years because nobody, nobody talks about the impact the use of pesticides in Canada. I don't know why, but so we decided to talk about it. And actually we've been focusing on use, on, on, um, on uh, prohibiting 20 pesticides that's been, that's been uh, banished in Europe for the last 20 years. We're still using it in Canada. So this is how we, we're starting from. Uh, how we do that? we actually pretty active. We're doing research paper, marketing campaign, publication, media outreach, a lot of media. We communicate all the time to the public, to the, the policy makers, to the enterprise. It's very important. This is the main thing we're doing. And when we want uh, to, to, want to give access to, to, a, to, to a, a new project for the public, well, we just do it. Because if it doesn't happen, we just make it. So very active. We have 13,000 members, and in population of, uh, of 7 million in Quebec, it's pretty big for uh, we, the main environmental group in, uh, in, in Quebec. Uh, we send the newsletters to more than 100,000 people every two weeks. Uh, so we, we have 500,000 hits uh, every year. So people, when they want to know about agriculture project, about fair trade, about transport, uh, ecological transportation, climate change, they go in, a, in our website. So we're doing a lot of media uh, work, so we, we've been very active in this area. What is the context of uh, agriculture in Canada? Big land, we, uh, we actually uh, produce a lot of uh, corn and uh, grain, and uh, there's not, it's big land, uh, a lot of beef as well. Uh, milk industry is big as well. So 
we, uh, what is specific to, to Canada is that uh, compared to other countries in the world, it's, it, the concentration uh, of the retailers is very high. There's only three retailers that own all the supermarkets in Canada. So it's very specific to our, our country, and I think there's others in Sweden. I guess they are the same position as us. So it makes it hard for new initiative to get in in the, in the, in the, the market industry. And uh, as well that in North America, almost the, the, the food travel around 2,600 two, 2, kilometers to get from our plates. So it's very, there's a lot of travel that goes for the food industry. And as you know, a third of the, the GS is being uh, produced by the, the, uh, the, the agriculture because we cut the forest to, to, to start conventional agriculture. And in North America, the food traveling all the time. So it's, it's, that's why we, we decided to focus, to say that we need to promote organic agriculture and, you know, in first step, local agriculture. Um, one of the f first projects that we built in Iquita that is very successful, it was inspired by Ur Urgency, uh, the CSA project. Uh, it was very inspiring because we said, there is local organic farmers in Quebec, they have no market, their citizen wants to buy a fair to, uh, um, uh, organic product in, uh, in Canada, so let's do a CSA project. So Iquitaire actually just started this project with farmers and citizens, and Iquitaire has the role of uh, the agency, the, I would say the publicity agency, the agency to meet the citizen and the farmers together. Uh, it's very specific to our network in Quebec. It's only certified organic farmers who are the one who are in, is getting there that are part of the CSA network. There's no only conventional local farmers in the, in the network. This network, all the principles that, that is being uh, discussing and, and built within the, with the, the farmers. We, um, Actually, this, the, the CSA uh, season is very short in Quebec. It's about 25 to 26 weeks. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's getting very successful. We have uh, more than 100 farms uh, part of the network that they actually deliver a basket of fruit, of fresh fruit and vegetable and some meat uh, to more than 20, 24,000 people in Quebec. Uh, all over the province, so it's it's getting it's growing. Actually, we have an increase of uh, uh, growing of five percent per year. So I guess the conventional industry will be very jealous of us. So you see that even small alternative are able to get through the market. Um, and this network is autonomous financially. It means that when a citizen want to be part of this project, they want to buy a share from a, a farmer, it needs to pay $20. And this $20 gets to ICTA so we can organize, coordinate the project and do the publicity for our farmers. We also uh, doing a lot of training because we want the farmers to get to, to be full equipped to be able to offer a, offering a, a nice product and know how to communicate with their partners. So this is how we manage to, uh, to do uh, our work. Uh, we actually did a lot of partnership uh, through the years, and we're doing new buying publicity in social media and magazines. Uh, we run in on the radio all the time. So we've been able to, to, to get through when we launched the season in the, in, the, in the summer, even if it's an old project, because you all doing public relation and, and media relation, you always have to announce a new thing. So we're trying to, to get very creative to talk about the new things within the CSA project. Uh, we're doing price survey for our uh, farmers because they need to know if the, 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 the vegetable they're selling is, is at a, a, good, a fair price for them and for the market. Uh, we, uh, we also organize mentorship for the new farmers that get into the network. So they're able to have a, 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 a more experienced farmer to help them to, 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 uh, to build their project. Uh, doing many uh, farm, I don't, I won't list all of them. This is an example of uh, what we do in our website. So when you, when we're doing publicity and outreach to the public, the media, the people goes to the website of Equitaire, they find, they put their addresses and they find the, the, the place, the drop off points near their home or their uh, workplace. And we also have a partnership now with one of the banner Metro. 
uh, ask them if they can, they can uh, offer to our farmers to get a drop of points in the parking lot of the, of the supermarket. And why is that? Because 85% of the people go to supermarket to buy their food. So I want them to see the farmers, our new project. And uh, now we have about 30 of them that is are the drop of points in front of a supermarket. And the supermarket is doing a great job because they cannot allow, they, they say it's hard for them to bring local organic uh, food within the supermarket. So we say, okay, we'll bring this food to your supermarket through uh, the CSA project. We, uh, this is a campaign, this is a new idea that, that we had just to show you that how we, we every year we're changing the look and the campaign now, what we, we said is we always ask, we used to ask the, the citizens to say, uh, you should buy a basket from the, uh, the farmers to help them, etc. But now we change the, we change the way we're talking to the citizen. We say, hey, this farmer is taking care of the, the health of the, of the environment and your health. So they want, to, they want actually to adopt you to take care of yourself for one summer and, and feed you well. So you'll be, they, they, it's like they're, they're your family doctor. Uh, we have a, in Quebec, it's very hard to have a family doctor, but it's much easier to have a family farmer. This is how we take care of our health there. Um, we are involved with the CSA project. It's a very concrete project that was aimed to respond to a market and respond to the demand of the consumer. But we say we need to do more with this. We need to, be, if, 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 to have an impact with this project because we believe in organic agriculture. We want the government to get involved. And in Quebec, there are pro-OGM, GMOs. So we need to, to use this network of this, this work is strong, the farmer is strong, the people really buy it to do, to do policy work. So every time there's, um, there's a policy or um, uh, meeting that's going on on organic, we present ourselves and we go and we talk and we want, to, we want the government to invest. So we use this network as a tool to influence the government. So we position ourselves as a main actor in organic agriculture in Quebec because of the CSA project. Uh, we're doing a lot of, uh, we're doing a lot of contests. Why we do that? Because people love that. They love it. It's a bit kitsch, but it's working well because you are able to reach many people in social media, people that you want to reach. We don't want to reach people that know us. We want to reach people that don't know us. And contest, it's a good way to do it. And every single marketing campaign, every project we do, we always want the contact information of the people because we give the con we use this contact we, and we use this contact to, con to communicate with them all the year round because we want to hook them into our campaign. If they don't like organic, they may be, be able to help us on the climate change issues, on fair trade, so they all receive the newsletter. Every single thing we're doing now, we ask for the contact information of all the people we talk to. Conferences everywhere. And I think it's very important. We learned this lesson because we were we're planning to have uh, auto financing and we say, God, you know, we have so many, we talk with so many people, we don't have their addresses. And it's the main people that will help us changing the world because our concept is changing the world one step at a time. Um, within the CSA project, we realize that it, it's one, this project is very, is very good, but it still reach a part of the population. So we want to get into other projects to reach other part of population. And one is that was the, to start working an in institution because a, a third of the population is, is being fed by the, the public institution in Quebec. I mean, schools, hospitals, there's a cafeterias, government has a cafeteria, etc. We said th this is a good way to start to promote our issues, which is local and organic food. So we did many pilot projects. They were very successful. The media loves it, but it didn't didn't get through, no? Everybody thought it was nice and cute and very cute and nice and said, so, okay, let's, let's make this project a policy work. So we, what we did is we decided after all the, the project we, we did, we decided, sorry, I'm getting too, uh, sorry, we decided to uh, get into the health institution. We said we're going to focus on the health institution. They have more money for food. Uh, they actually supposed to promote healthy habits. 
uh, they also uh, they, they were able to they have their own kitchen. So it was it was we decided to focus on health institutions to have an impact to start with an impact and then we will grow into the other schools. So we did a, a survey and then we did a research progress and we published a guide for the, the buyers in the institution. And we also give presentation to doctors, to a public health uh, representative. So to say, hey, it's possible to buy a local product even if we have you know, trade agreement, international trade agreement. So we just, we look at the opportunity, the challenges, and we present it this way. So they have this guide, it's like five pages, and they know exactly what, with, which law to use to buy local and organic food and where to buy it. And eventually it got so much pressure into the health, uh, the health uh, system that the government decide to, and we, we, we keep, pushing government to, to put a, 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 a policy on institution because the, our super uh, government was always said to the, the citizen in Quebec, you need to buy local, it's nice for the economy, et cetera. We said, okay, we agree with that totally, but the government needs to, to give the example. So eventually in May 2014, I was invited to comment the, the new policy on food uh, in institution, and it was it was it was great because we were able to comment it. We were the only environmental group there, and eventually they they published it and they 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 they, um, they brought it to all the institution. And now the and we because we had a guide in the same times this 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 uh, this policy with with our educational tool brought this together, and the people were able to act in the same way they had the government will tell them that they must do some effort for local uh, buying. So it was, a, it was a good momentum at, at this time. This is another, um, beside the, the, the very concrete project we have, we communicate a lot about new initiative because there's so many interesting initiatives uh, on, on alternative uh, food system, uh, collective garden, community garden, CSA project, there's many, many things going on, but they don't have Th this organ, small organization, small project, don't have the, the, the energy and the, the power to, to be able to, to get through to, to, to talk about their project in the public. So we did a platform, it's called Iplus Ta Ville. Oh, okay, one minute. Iplus Ta Ville, and uh, it's Peel Your City. Peel Your City. So you, if there's a, there's a lot of food desert in many cities all around the world, so you were able to, to know exactly where to find fresh food and vegetable in the city within this new alternative project that is not a supermarket. Um, I would say just to, to, to finish that the experience we have in Quebec, it's communi communication is key. It's a very key. We communi communicate all the time what we're doing to the leaders, to the government official, the people working in institution, to the enterprise, to everybody. We keep we're talking about our project, and it helped us, it help us be, put us in a position of important actors in many policy in Quebec. They don't, their government don't publish a policy on climate change without asking ITER to look at it, neither for de sustainable development or organic or agriculture. So it was a very successful way of communicating because when you have the public with you, you have everybody on the side. I don't know, in, 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 you know, Quebec is part of North America and in the way it's working, it's the public needs to, the grassroots needs to grow and then go up into the policy because the politician, what they like is to be on TV and talk about the nice thing they're doing. But if we want them to do it, then the public needs to push. And this is how we've been managed to do it. But now we manage as well to have contact with them. Uh, we're doing a lot of petition as well. It's, I know it's, it seems a bit weird, like it's old school maybe, but with petition, you have the contact information of the people that support you, and you give that to government and say, you know, there's 100,000 people interesting in this issue, we're going to help you think about it. So we, we, we managed to, with the help of the, the public, to do policy work at the municipal level and at provincial level, at the government level, uh, we have more problem because we have a right-wing government that loves uh, tar sand oil uh, exploitation. So 
it's, it's harder, but we get through the province, we're able to, to get to pass uh, ambitious uh, program on, on climate change, for example. Um, so I think policy, it's, that, it, it's just that it's, 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 uh, it's essential because what, I, what we notice, we've been doing so much education, there's a limit to education. The citizen cannot do any, everything by themselves, so the leaders need to help us to get another step up. Education is essential, but it's not the only tool we have to change the world. And we, I know it's sometimes we say that this, this politician are, it's not all politicians are open to, to listen to us, but at least when they arrive, when they change the government, we go see them and we educate them. We meet them and say, look, this is the issue on environment. This is the real important issue you need to focus on. And they actually listen. I don't know if they not do everything we want, of course, of course not. But we push, we keep doing it for any parties. We, we're not partisan of any, uh, any government, but we educate them, we talk to them, we send information all the time, so they have to, they finally have to listen to us. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I would, uh, that's the only, uh, thank you. And this is, uh, I would, uh, <laughs> I'll be pleased to answer your question after.